In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about construction RFIs, which is short for Request for Information. Let's go! Okay, so a Request for Information, or more often just referred to as an RFI, is the formal practice of submitting a question to the design team who is then responsible for providing a clear answer. RFIs are commonplace in the construction industry as architects and engineers do their best to provide a clear set of drawings and specifications and other contract documents, but sometimes don't include enough information to depict the full intent of how a building is intended to be constructed. An RFI is just a means to communicate this information back and forth in a formal way that can be tracked. RFIs don't always impact changes in the design or the specification, but if there's a large enough gap or lack in detail presented in the plan and specs, then RFIs can result in updated drawing details and or specification sections. These updates would then be captured in a construction bulletin. A construction bulletin is the design team's formal update to the contract documents so that all of this information is clearly updated and not buried within these individual RFI documents. It's not uncommon for large projects to have hundreds of RFIs. Okay, so a couple things you should find in an RFI at minimum include the RFI number and title so it can be tracked on a log accordingly, the project name and description, the company or subcontractor whom originated the RFI, the RFI submitted date or the day that is sent over to the design team, the RFI response required date, the question you're asking, which sometimes may include a suggested answer, which I'll get to in just a minute, any reference documents including drawings, specifications, or other contract documents that would help support your question, which would then help expedite the response time of the RFI. And then finally, once the RFI has been returned by the design team, it should have a clear answer with any applicable supporting documents, whether that's a new drawing detail or a new specification section, as well as the date the response was provided. So a couple notes I want to clarify before we move on. Many projects will actually have specification sections entitled RFIs or requests for information. And these are generally found at the top of your spec section. If this spec section is included and these specifications are part of your bid documents or actually part of your project contract documents, then you're obligated to follow these written instructions. So this makes the date that the contractor submitted the RFI to the design team extremely important because it sets a contractual date and response time from the design team. With large construction projects being as fast paced as they are, Time is critical because any schedule impacts could lead to huge monetary impacts. So, for example, if the construction team submits an RFI, but they need an answer like tomorrow, the specifications may allow the design team up to five days to respond, and the design team's well within their contract requirements if they aren't able to respond within those five days. So, within those five days, a project could be at a standstill losing tens of thousands of dollars because they're on hold. So, the same holds true for the design team which is why the return date is extremely important as well. If the design team doesn't respond in that five day window and say they respond like 20 days later, well, the construction team could have been put on hold for that time. And the construction team is technically entitled to schedule extension and potentially extra money by not getting a response in a timely fashion. Okay, so these are obviously situations that everyone wants to avoid. So it's always best to pre-plan and look ahead at all future activities and scope to prevent these scenarios. It's also great practice to ensure that this RFI specification section exists at the onset of construction so that the design team and the construction team are both on the same page and on board with these written instructions. I would also suggest that if the specification section for RFIs doesn't exist, then you ask your design team to include it. Also, if it is included, but there's missing information or unclear information, ask for that. What is the turnaround time that the design team needs to provide you an answer with? Well, if it's not included, then that could be a battle down the road. For instance, if they say five days, does that mean five business days? Does that mean five days, including the weekend? Who knows? That should be clearly written in the RFI specification section. Also, if there's cutoff times during the day, for instance, if an RFI is submitted after 2 p.m., is it technically the next day? If you submit an RFI at 11.59 p.m., is it the same day? Set those expectations at the front end so you guys aren't getting into these battles down the road. Remember, a happy design team and a happy construction team leads to a more successful project. 
so earlier, I also mentioned that contractors may provide suggestions within the RFI. Well, as a contractor, this may introduce risk because you're providing design assistance, even though you likely don't hold any design certifications. If your suggestions happens to fail and it's documented that you provided a suggestion, although the design team may have allowed it to happen, you still may be a little bit liable. It all depends on what's in the specifications because the specifications may tell you that you need to provide a suggestion. So as a contractor, you should just weigh the level of risk versus the reward in providing suggestions throughout the process. So that being said, a suggestion isn't the end of the world and I actually often provide them because they're usually low risk and they help expedite the design process. So the RFI specification section may also require you to provide notice if there's a potential cost impact or schedule impact if you're providing a suggestion. Obviously, if you're not providing a suggestion, you may not know what the answer is. So you don't know if there's a cost or schedule impact until the design team provides you a solution. So I'm getting a little into the weeds here, but if an RFI impacts design and generates cost, make sure that you go through the change order process prior to proceeding with the changes. As a contractor, you don't want to proceed with changes that you have cost or schedule implications with without ensuring that the owner has already signed off and approved those changes. So writing an RFI late may not just impact the immediate construction schedule from waiting on an answer, but if you have to capture costs and get costs approved, that's added time that you could be losing. So as long as you follow the RFI process per the specifications and the design ultimately did change, then you should be entitled if there are cost impacts or schedule impacts. There's also the flip side. If the RFI response removed scope or simplified scope, then you should owe a credit or reduce time in the schedule accordingly. So I would consider there to be two types of RFIs. RFI number one is your pre-bid RFI, which is just that. It's submitted by contractors prior to starting construction so that they can clear up the intent of the drawings and specifications and accurately bid the project. And the second type of RFI is just your standard RFI. It's during the construction process and it's just to capture anything else that was overlooked or lacking in detail to help facilitate the intent of construction. So hopefully I've covered everything that you should put in an RFI, but there are also things that you should not and cannot put in an RFI. These are considered frivolous RFIs and they're just a waste of the design team's time. Some contracts actually allow the design team to recoup costs associated with dealing with these frivolous RFIs because they're a waste of time. So always triple check your RFIs if you're writing them directly and more importantly, validate them against the construction documents to make sure that the information is not already included. Don't just blindly forward these along, validate them first. So here are some major don'ts to RFIs. One, information that's already included in the construction or contract documents. Don't include it, you should already know it's there. Two, having a lack of information to properly answer the RFI. If you submit an RFI that doesn't have enough information, it's just a waste of everyone's time. Three, asking for the RFI to be expedited in the question of the RFI. Four, asking to confirm means and methods. Really, means and methods is the responsibility of the contractor. There are a few other examples of what not to include, but these are the major ones. So before I show you an example of an RFI, I just want to recap the full process. Number one, the construction team writes and submits the RFI to the design team. Number two, the design team answers the RFI and returns it back to the construction team. Upon receipt, the construction team looks at the RFI and determines if there is a cost or schedule impact based on the answer. If there is, they should provide notice to the owner prior to proceeding. They should also get written approval. If there's no cost or schedule impact upon the response in the RFI, release the RFI to the rest of the construction team and proceed. Number three, always upload the RFI using your document management software and tag it on the drawings or in the specifications. This allows the field installers to see the change and move forward with these changes prior to the full release in the next construction bulletin. Number four, track all your RFIs on a log. Get the date submitted, the date returned, the answer, and all the other applicable information so everyone's being held accountable. Okay, so let's jump into a set of drawings and I've already got an RFI in mind that I'm gonna use as a detail. So we're on sheet S-01, which is a foundation plan, and we're going to look at detail one, which is just the overall foundation plan. I've already got the drawing marked up on how I would submit it in this RFI. So I've got it bubbled, I've got things highlighted, and I've got an arrow pointing right to it, which draws the attention from the design team to this point on the drawing. This just helps, again, expedite the answer in the process. So when we zoom in here, 
you can see that the foundation wall has a thickness of one foot two inches. This is 12 inches plus two inches. So a total thickness of 14 inches. Now keep that in mind. Now I've gone to the next page, S-02, which is the foundation details page. This actually shows a section cut of the wall we were just looking at on the highlighted page before. Now, if I look at detail nine and zoom in on it, I can see a thickness that overall is 16 inches. So there's a conflict between these two drawings, and this is going to lead me to ask the question of which wall thickness should it be? Okay, so I've already got this all filled out, but let's go through it. At the top of the page, you can clearly see that this is labeled as a request for information. I've got the RFI number as RFI-001. The project can be your project name. The two is who you're sending it to on the design team. The date is the date you submitted it to the design team, which remember starts the clock on the design team's response. And then the response required date is that which is included in the specifications or which you agree to at the beginning of the project. Next is the subject, which is the full description and title of the RFI, which is RFI-001 Foundation Wall Thickness. So the next section is the description, but at the top of the description, before I even ask the question, I like to include all my references so that the design team knows exactly what they'll be looking at and where to go. So if you notice, I reference one on SO1 and nine on SO2. Then I proceed with the question. On one SO1, the wall thickness is shown to be one foot two inches or 14 inches. On 9SO2, the wall thickness is shown to be 8 plus 2 plus 6, or 16 inches. So obviously these two dimensions don't match, so one is right and one is wrong. Which is the purpose of this RFI? So then finally I ask the question. The architect and the design team please confirm the wall thickness at the location highlighted. Please provide updated details and or foundation plan drawing. So as you can see, I also included for them to please confirm all other coordination of the architectural details so that they're adjusting all the drawings at the same time. I've got no suggestion for the response because ultimately I don't know what the response should be. So again, we're gonna attach those two previous drawings that I already put markups and arrows and highlights on, which all just help expedite the response time of this RFI, and then we click send. Okay, so if this video on RFIs helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe because I've got more to come. While we wait on the design team to respond back and provide us an answer on this RFI response, check out some of my other videos. I go in depth on drawing specifications and some technology tips. And as always, bye for now.